Hey. How are you enjoying your Sydney experience? Loving Sydney as usual. I like your green shoes. Thank you very much. I've, Kenneth Branagh said much the same thing, so they're my good luck interview shoes. And then did, did, did he go out and get himself a pair? I are those ASICs? They are. Yes, I know those anywhere. It's the only way to go. So how was it returning to the character of Poe? It's great. I mean, Poe fits like a glab. Sometimes in your career you, you stumble upon a character that just is perfectly suited to your strengths. So coming back to him was, was a, quite a reunion. And I mean, how much of Poe is Jack Black and how much of Jack Black is Poe? Or are you one and the same? We are one. <laughs> He's like my son. And uh, how do you enjoy the recording process? I hear you had a bit of panda on Peacock action with uh, Gary Oldman in person. It's true, you know, for the most part we, we, we record in isolation. There's, there's no, uh, no palling around with the other cast members. It's better for the uh, animators. Mm. It's easier for them to animate to the isolated vocal tracks, but the director insisted that Gary, and Ol Gary Oldman and I do our scene together. The first time Poe and the Peacock meet, uh, there's a lot of intense back and forth and overlap and laughter that, uh, that couldn't be done in isolation. So we got together and it was a thrill for me because he's always been one of my favorite actors. Do you still get those moments when you meet a famous person you haven't met before and go, wow, I'm meeting X. You still get starstruck? Yeah. For the most part, I don't really want to meet my heroes. Mm. I get too nervous, and uh, I, I can't form sentences, and, and uh, I like to see them, but from a distance. <laughs> but you mentioned recording these things in isolation. I mean, how is that, just basically standing on a mic, giving it someone? I, mean, I assume you're improvising and coming up with gags as you go. I mean, how do you enjoy the experience of just working on your own, basically talking to yourself? I like it. I'm used to it. That's that's how I that's how I started. Just doing it in the mirror at home, imagining you know, stories and scenarios, characters. Uh, very comfortable, very low pressure. <laughs> and how was Jennifer to work with as director for Kung Fu Panda Two? Jennifer Yen Nelson is an amazing director. She's got a very gentle touch, very uh, subtle approach, and uh, I, I quite appreciated it. And how about the boss man? Obviously, Mr. Katzenberg. Is he a hands-on producer, a, a tough guy to work for? El Presidente <laughs> the DreamWorks? Yes. He's, uh, he's great. Great uh, producer, owner. Uh, so hands-on, so involved, and cares so much for the final product. He's uh, an amazing man. A lot I, to learn from him. I mean, when they pitched the idea of Kung Fu Panda to you, I mean, did you have much input of where you wanted the characters to go, or did, did you read the script and go, well, you just got it? Uh, I didn't uh, read the script. Uh, they first came to me and said, here's the idea. What do you think of this idea? And uh, it was amazing. So uh, I didn't have to say, no, guys, you got it all wrong. I wish I could take more <laughs> credit for it, but they were brilliant. Uh, yeah, Abel and Berger, they did a great job. And are you a big fan of kung fu films? I mean, obviously, I don't know if you got to meet them recording, but you've got like John claude Van Damme in here and Jackie Chan. I mean, some pretty cool customers in there. I mean, were you a big fan of the whole kung fu film genre? Yes, I do love the kung fu. Jackie Chan, Jean Claude Van Damme, uh, of course, Bruce Lee. Yes. And uh, more recently, uh, I'm really into Stephen Chow, Kung Fu Hustle, the films that uh, he's made. Would you want to make a live action kung fu film? Maybe. That would be fun. Because I saw you, you showed off your new move at the uh, premiere last See? night. See? I got some it's, moves. It's pretty smooth. Thank you. So, I mean, I mean, is animation something you want to do more of? I mean, obviously, you've done so well and had so much success with Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. Could you imagine doing it with another character, or do you kind of go, no, that is, I can't top Kung Fu Panda? Um, I, uh, you know, I'm open to anything. I like working with passionate, creative people. Hmm. And I don't like to, you know, pigeonhole myself and say, oh, I'm not going to do another one of those or what's my next character going to be? I just want to work with, with exciting people. Awesome. I think our time is up. Thank you so much, Thank Jack. Thank you. An absolute pleasure. Pleasure was mine. One more. Oh, a quick question for Rolling Stone magazine, bizarrely yes. enough. They're, they've asked me to ask you because they're doing a 20th year anniversary of Nirvana's Nevermind. Ah. And they wanted to know what you think of that album and did it change your life when you heard it? Has it been that long? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, that was definitely one of the formative uh, uh, experiences for me, listening to Nirvana, Nirvana for the first time. I'm proud to say I was there before Nevermind. <laughs> I was there for Bleach. Old school. Uh, yeah, someone turned me on to that album, and I was just like, who are these guys that are changing music? Yeah, that, that was one of the times when it was like I had never heard anything like it before, and it was so compelling. It must have been similar to what it was like when people first heard Led Zeppelin or the mm. Beatles, you know. But um, I remember seeing them live in San Francisco. I don't remember the date, but I remember it was the night that Bill Graham had died. Oh, wow. So. And they were so fucking good. And the thing that was amazing about them was not just them. They were compelling and in incredibly charismatic. Mm. But also the crowd. The crowd was in a trance just undulating mass of pleasure. And everyone knew that, that uh, this was a moment, that mm. they were witnessing you know, a historical uh, musical experience. And ever since then, I know that it's, it's the crowd that's just as important as, as the band yeah. in making a show incredible. Because as good as Nirvana was, if they were in front of a bunch of stiffs, that would, show yeah. wouldn't have been so great. Yeah. Takes two to tango. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much. All right. I got that one in. They've given